Hi, everyone. Welcome. We'll be getting going in a couple minutes. Great to see everybody here from, from all over the place. Williamstown, Mass. Is that Williamstown, Massachusetts? See lots of places. Cincinnati, Phoenix, Arad, Houston, Maryland, New Hampshire, of course, Barbara, and uh, all over the place. Orinda, California, Bristol in the UK. Barbara Miles in New Hampshire is an archivist and historian, and she relies on old notebooks. I love that. Uh, yeah, Dan's old notebooks are apparently going to be quite the thing. I'm looking forward to this. Sarasota, Florida, Alexandria, Virginia, all the swing states, and New York City. A red hawk feasting on a squirrel on Thanksgiving Day. Well, thanks, thanks to the squirrels. Hi, Jim, Howie, and Frida from the States and I guess currently in Israel. Um, Kent, UK. I grew up right next to Kent, Connecticut. San Francisco. All right. It's great to see everybody here. I think it's about time to uh, get going. I uh, want to welcome everybody to this webinar, one of our now uh, bi weekly series. Uh, today, uh, Avi Sadiv, who is the executive director of our Canadian uh, Society for the Protection of Nature in Israel, our affiliate in Canada, he'll be our he'll be running the webinar today in place of Lawrence and uh, taking over that duty from him to some degree. So we're very thankful for that. Thankful to our friends at Canadian SPI uh, who are allowing Avi to do this, and uh, and uh, we also thank, of course, our friends at uh, ASPI in America. Nature Israel, uh, all our great supporters and board members uh, who, like our friends in Canada, have been a special friends of Dan Alone and our birders here in SPNI for many years. Um, many people around the world, I've met people around the world who think that really SPNI is a birding organization. And although it's really one of our main and one of our best uh, things that we do, it is just one of the things that we do. We protect biodiversity and habitats uh, all over Israel. All the biodiversity and all the habitats are in our, in our Ballywick. Um, but the birds are crucial. I'm sure you all know we're on a world's second most important bird migration fly route north to south along the Rift Valley, the Syrian African Rift Valley. And uh, so much, so much to talk about with birds. So much to, uh, to learn from them and uh, and the issues are critical, uh, protecting all, their, all the birds and all the habitats. Uh, Dan alone has been with us for quite a while. I'm not going to give you too much of his history other than to say that he's uh, been a birder from, uh, from uh, his childhood on kibbutz. Uh, he's going to be talking about that and uh, some of the milestones in his career in, uh, in protecting birds uh, throughout this country and, uh, and uh, with all his heart and with the great staff. Uh, many of whom you've all met on these webinars, uh, from the Jerusalem Bird Observatory and from Eilat and from Mahula. Uh, we have a network throughout the country, uh, very proud of what we do. Dan works with us in our offices in Tel Aviv, but he's out about in the field all the time, north to south, Kfar Rupin, where we have some really interesting project going on, uh, converting uh, former fish ponds to uh, nature reserves. And... Uh, Dan will be touching on a lot of these issues and a lot of beautiful artwork, which is also, by the way, for sale. Dan will mention it. You see the screen in front of you. Um, we will be selling uh, this artwork. Now it's online, original prints and uh, originals and prints of the originals. So um, please uh, check that out if you're an art lover or a bird lover or both. We're, uh, we're really happy to be here. So Dan, thank you very much. It's Looking forward to this webinar, and we'll uh, we'll take some questions in the chats, and uh, we will get back to you later. But meanwhile, take it away, Dan Alone. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Avi and Lawrence. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depend where you are. Um, I will start with a apologize. My English is not perfect. As Jay say, I was growing in a kibbutz and my English teacher used to say that I will never know English uh, and I will never speak um, English. So 
um, I, I have to um, I have to stick with that. Um, actually, I learn English when I uh, go for my first um, uh, my first uh, bird count in Eilat back in in the eighties, and I I have to walk with a group of birders from all over the world. The world there were no Israeli in there, um, so I have to uh, to learn English. Um, so again, I apologize if my English is not perfect. I hope the story I'm going to tell you today um, will, be, um, will be good enough to cover my English. So let me share the screen, um, my presentation. So um, the story of my old notebook um, start a little bit uh, more than a year ago. Um, not far from where I am now, I sit in my house in Fambilu, uh, the center of Israel, uh, somewhere between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. Sorry, just a minute, okay. Um, so, um, I was, um, just a second, okay. So, I, I went building uh, not far from here. Uh, it was uh, Shabbat morning, Saturday morning, um, to a place where I used to go um, in many Shabbat during spring and, and autumn. Um, and I saw this lovely bird, um, but um, and I, I I heard I heard it calling, um, and suddenly I I feel something very strong in my in my body and saying, well, this bird is a very common bird. Um, and um, I hear this call uh, every spring and, and autumn while they are passing in Israel. But when I was a child many years ago, um, I used to see this bird and hear the beautiful song of this bird um, close to my house uh, in, an, in another world. Um, they used to breed in Israel and not anymore. I will come back to this bird and also say the, the name and everything uh, later. So um, I, I go back home and um, I, I, I say to my, to my family members, uh, I need to, th there's a story here I need to say. Um, there are lots of birds that I used to see when I was a kid. Um, and unfortunately, many of them uh, we don't see anymore, or we don't see as many as we used to see when I was when I, when I was a kid. And everything, all this story, uh, um, I, I used to put them in this old notebook. Um, so I, I took this pile of old notebook, put them in my living room, and they now part of my my living room. And I dig um, stories um, uh, from this uh, old notebook um, um, to, um, to, to, to tell the story of birds that we don't see uh, anymore, or some of them we do see, but we see less, we, we hear less. Um, so this is the story of, non, of, my, of my old notebook. Um, when I came with this idea, I call uh, the, the author of the uh, website, of our website, uh, Birds, Birds of Gael, uh, Arad Ben David. And um, uh, I told him my, my idea, and of course he loved it and say, go ahead, you start, uh, send me uh, stories and I will, uh, I, I will make it, um, I, I will add it for you, of course. And, uh, 
I will find a, a good way to present it at the, at the website. And, um, and then I call other friends. I call uh, my friend Meidad, Meidad Goren. Uh, he's not only a friend, he's a colleague, uh, work with us at uh, Bird Life Israel. And I ask him, can you please, I will write my story, my stories in, in Hebrew. Can you please um, uh, translate it to English? He say, of course, I will do it for you. And then I call um, Mark Pearson from England. Uh, Mark is a, is a good friend and he work with us, helping us uh, with the English website and uh, champion of the flyways and many other projects. I, I told him I want to send him these uh, stories and uh, would like him to, to um, uh, go through the English of my dad and, and, and make it nicer and prettier and edit. I say, of course, I will do it. It's a, it's a privilege. And then when everything come true and I send the first story to Zeb and I was uh, expected to see his uh, first chapter in the website with a nice uh, picture that, the, that Arad is getting from one of the excellent photographers, etc. Then Arad say, listen, I have, a, I have a surprise for you. Say, okay. Uh, and then he told me um, that Zev Labinger, Zev is a, is a good friend, colleague, he used to work with us again in the Bird Life Israel until a few years ago, and a great artist. Zev um, wants to, uh, I, I, I called Zev and I told him about your idea, and he suggested that he will make his own art, his own, his own drawing for uh, each one of your chapters. Um, so this is, uh, I, I was so excite, exciting about it and um, it is so nice. So here you can see Zev, Zev drawing of himself and, and down in the bottom, this is me. Zev make a, a drawing of, of myself watching bird uh, near my kibbutz uh, many years ago. I, I know Zev for many years, and so so this is the story of how everything uh, started. Um, um, so again, I will I, I, I will say a few words about a, a few words about my history. I I start building, start build watching, um, forty years ago. Uh, I used to live. I I born in a kibbutz, kibbutz Mizra, uh, near. The city of Nazareth, um, about uh, five kilometers from the city of Nazareth, but down the valley, not on the mountain like like Nazareth. Um, and around the kibbutz, the kibbutz is surrounded with fields and and, and agriculture and reservoirs and uh, a little further also fish ponds and 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 um, excellent place uh, to watch to watch birds. Um, so I started uh, watching birds around the kibbutz. Um, many of you, I think, knows kibbutzes, and you know that one of the things uh, we do as kids in the kibbutz, we used to drive tractors. So I used to go birding on a tractor. I don't know how many of you uh, birds on a tractor, but it was a, a very nice uh, a very nice uh, experience to uh, go birding on a tractor. Not all the, the birds didn't like it always because tractors are, are a bit um, noisy, but it was nice. It was a great experience. I couldn't drive a car, so the tractor was a very, very, very good way to go birding in the. And so many of the stories I'm going to um, to show you here. Is, um, is experience I have from, from that days. Uh, um, the 80s, I start building um, about um, uh, 1981. Um, and uh, so the beautiful 80s for me um, was excellent. This is where I start. So I want to start, um, with a very uh, symbolic birds. 
for us Israeli, not only for us, for everybody reading, uh, you know, the Bible and things like that. Everybody hear about the sound of the turtle, song of the turtle, the, the, sorry, the, the song of the dove, and sing the, the call of the dove. And um, so th this is this is where I this is what I hear when I was a, when when I was a child. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah yes. Just a, quick, just a quick comment. People are asking if we'd be to mention the Hebrew name of every bird when you'd mention. Okay. So this is Tomatsui. It's a turtle, turtle dove. Right? A turtle dove. Yeah, turtle dove is Tomatsui in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. You remember? Um, you have to interrupt. So, um, um, a turtle dove is, um, um, is, a, is a bird that, that uh, makes summer in Israel, they breed in Israel, and uh, they go and they migrate to Africa in the, um, in the winter, in the, in the autumn. Um, they also breed in north of us, in, in Europe, and in central, central and western uh, Asia. Um, when I was a kid, it was a very common bird. I used to see sometime in April, in, in May, June, flocks of hundreds, sometimes even thousands of turtle doves. Unfortunately, today, this is not the situation. Um, we used to see, we, we can see now two, three, sometimes five, in a very good migrant day, we can see 100, 200, um, but not the number I used to see as a kid. I am um, in, uh, if you go to the, to the blog and read the chapter about the, the turtle dove, you can, you can see a, a page from my, my notebook showing thousands of, uh, of, of, of turtle dove uh, near um, a, a lake, a lake that was about five kilometers from my house. I was there a few times this summer and I didn't see more than 50. So this is, this, this is, this is the sad story of turtle doves. Turtle doves uh, are decreasing not only in Israel, uh, actually in Israel, the situation is better than most of Europe. They still breed um, uh, in most of Israel. Um, uh, they, uh, I would say, they breed in in many of our villages and small small towns. Uh, but the numbers are probably maybe 50, 40 percent of what I used to see um, 40 years ago. Um, so the story of the turtle dove is a, is a sad story. And we always say that we, um, and I think this is, this is a, a sure, um, a sure um, uh, idea that we have to, uh, with our colleagues in Europe, that we don't want to, uh, to the turtle dove uh, to be the, the next, uh, um, the next, uh, 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 Traveling pigeon, or what? What's his name? The wandering pigeon from from, from America, um, and unfortunately, a turtle dove is still a bird that people hunt in in Europe, in in Asia. Unfortunately, also in Israel, we are now in a in a campaign to stop this this uh, hunting. We managed to stop it now for one year, and hopefully, we we can stop it for forever. Um, so uh, unfortunately, turtle dove. Um, we used to see the song, uh, to hear the song everywhere. Uh, it is not the case anymore. We hear him less and less. This is a very sad, sad story for us. Another birds, um, more a migrant bird, but also uh, they also breed in Israel. Not in big numbers. They used to breed. Probably few thousand uh, pairs, um, um, like 30, 40 years ago. Um, today, um, in the last 
I would say 10, 15 years, not more than just few pairs breed in Israel. Um, and, and more than that, it used to be a very, very common migrant bird. Um, I, you, I remember this, this bird when I walk in, in a field in, in spring and autumn, uh, I used to, to chase sometime 20, 50, 40. We used to catch them uh, in, in, in sometime even in a lot while, while ringing, we could catch um, like 10, 15 in a, in a net. Um, this is not the situation anymore. Um, I go birding during spring and autumn and I hardly see any of them. I don't hear the, the, the calls anymore. Uh, common quails, slav, uh, slav no dead uh, in Hebrew, are very become, they're not rare, but uh, uh, we have less and less of them. Um, not like the turtle dove, um, common quail is not uh, is not an um, a endangered bird uh, if you look into the spreadsheet of uh, BirdLife International or uh, IUCN. Um, I think they declare near threatened or something like that, or even 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 uh, even not that. In Israel, they are now critical in danger because, like I said many years ago, we have thousands of breeding pairs, maybe two or three thousand. Today, um, hardly any, may, maybe five or 10 every year. Um, so in Israel, they are critically in danger, but I think um, that you guys in Europe and Asia probably have problem with quails that you are not aware yet. Uh, because the birds that I used to see in spring and autumn, uh, in, in our fields are uh, coming from Europe, coming from Asia, the migrants from somewhere. So if we see less and less quail somewhere in the world, there are less quails uh, uh, nesting, breeding. Um, so I think there's a problem here. And um, uh, maybe when, when uh, people in the in the breeding area of this bird, we'll, we'll find out that there's a problem. Maybe it will be too late. So I think, and I, um, I write about it, I talk to people about it, that uh, you, you guys in Europe should, uh, should uh, start look uh, on, on these birds and, and, and make sure that we, we don't lose them. This is not a common bird. It's, it was never a common bird. Uh, it's called a uh, black wing pratting call or shadmit shkorat kanaf in Hebrew. But this is a very, this is a very, um, a, a very special story. Um, about 1983, I did my first um, soaring bird survey uh, in, uh, in the autumn. Uh, in a place called Kfar Kassem, no far, not far from Tel Aviv. It was um, um, the, the first place where uh, we Israeli um, learn about the, the, uh, the numbers of birds of prey and soaring birds that pass uh, over Israel. I will talk a little bit about it later because I have another story about this survey. It, it was um, part of my, my, my building be uh, beginning, if I can say this, this uh, very, very important survey. But this story is a story about a bird uh, which breed um, uh, in, the, in Eastern Europe, not in not in uh, not not in, in in Western Europe, and also into into Asia, um, we have two species of pratting. We have three species of pratting in Israel, but two of them are more common: the, the, the common pratting call and, and this one, the black wing pratting call. Um, during this survey, uh, one of them, uh, the most uh, powerful experience that I used to, to, uh, 
to um, uh, to see there was a flock, flocks of uh, black uh, black wing particles. Sometime fifteen hundred, uh, many hundreds together, big, big flocks like in this um, beautiful artwork of of the Ev, um, guiding above us high in the sky. Not not easy to not easy to find, um, but Unfortunately, uh, in the last, I think, 15 years, maybe 20 years, we don't see these flocks anymore. We do have black wing pratting calls in Israel. We see them sometime in flocks of five, 10, maybe 40, 30. But this huge flock that we used to see many years ago in this survey, uh, Nilk Farkasem, um, we don't see them anymore. Now one can say, well, maybe you don't count there in, uh, anymore. Yeah, we do. We count around Kfar Kassem every year for the last, um, I think, seven years. We back to count in, in Kfar Kassem and we don't see these flocks anymore. Uh, we used to do a big survey of soaring bird in the north of Israel, the same, the same, situation just about 100 kilometer to the north and um, slowly slowly we we uh, we lose these big flocks of a, a black wing pattern calls again if i look if i look into the numbers of bird life and and uh, iucn i don't see um, um uh, the, the, there is no problem about uh, black wing black wing pattern calls and I ask myself, what is going on here? Um, many years ago, we used to see flocks of hundreds and today we don't see them. So back to my experience, this was a great experience that I experienced as a child. And unfortunately, young bird watchers today don't. They don't have this amazing, powerful experience of 500 black wing practical flying overhead. I, I think it's something that, um, it's, a, it's a story I should, I should tell them, but they will, they will not able to experience that. And that's, that, that's a sad story for them. Swallows, um, um, this is um, uh, in Hebrew, um, refatot. Um, swallows are still, still um, um, very common in Israel. Uh, they breed in Israel, they winter in Israel. Yesterday I went birding, I saw hundreds of them. Um, so the story here is not uh, a, a bird that we lose, it's just a phenomena that, that is not exist anymore. Um, almost every evening after this count in Kfarkasem, which I mentioned in the last, the last story of the fretting call, we used to go to um, an amazing, powerful uh, roost site of, uh, of swallows. Uh, there were um, four species of swallows used to, used to go there. Um, a bound swallow was the most common one, the one, the one we see here, but also um, a, a house, a house mounting and sand mounting and um, and a red red tailed uh, a red red um, um, uh, what uh, the, 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 uh, another, another swallow sorry um, and uh, I think there were at least at least at least um, um, half a million of them uh, in in some days and uh, other days a uh, hundred thousand. Um, there was all, always um, debate about the number, but, but everybody agreed that it was huge, huge amount of swallows. Uh, I don't know such roost, such a big roost anymore in Israel. There are many, many roosts of swallows. Uh, they need to roost somewhere, but something like that, hundreds of thousands of them um, just diving into the, the, the the reeds to, um, to, to roost. Um, 
Um, this is this is something I know I never I never saw again, uh, and uh, this this is experience that well I hope because we still have swallows, and uh, that maybe one day we find um, um, an amazing uh, swallow a swallow roost uh, like uh, like this one. So as an, as I mentioned, one of my um, one of my my big experience um, uh, as as a young birder was to join um, the, the the leading bird watchers of this time um, in Israel. Um, it was like I say, uh, the middle of the eighties and into the eighties and then the nineties. And um, joined this amazing uh, survey of uh, uh, soaring birds, mainly birds of prey, like these amazing lesser spotted eagles uh, in this again ex beautiful uh, outwalk of uh, Zaev. Um, and and this is a good story for uh, for a change. Um, the numbers of soaring birds in Israel um, did not change, um, at least for most of the species. Maybe some species, uh, but 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 this, but 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 um, not 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 a remarkable uh, change. Most of our uh, birds of prey and soaring birds are still migrant in a big numbers. I mean, in, in the same numbers. For the example, this lesser spotted eagle, Ait Choresh, Beivrit in Hebrew, um, we used to have 100,000 annually um, in the old days of Kfar Kassem, 80, 83, 84, 85. And this is the same number that still pass over Israel. By the way, this is the entire world population of this species. Uh, there are about 100,000 lesser spotted uh, eagles uh, breed, breed in Israel. So this is a good story saying that not everything um, uh, reduced, not everything uh, 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 is going down. Some of our birds still migrant in nice, uh, good numbers. So during this autumn survey, we also count about uh, 300,000 to half a million to, to about 500,000 um, honey buzzards, um, about 50, 60,000 Levant Sparrowhawk. Again, the entire world population of Levant Sparrowhawk uh, goes through the uh, go to Israel in the autumn and in the in the, in the spring. Uh, and we count about 35 species of birds of prey and um, pelicans and storks. Um, amazing. Uh, if any of you. Um, haven't seen this, that amazing migration of birds of prey in Israel, either in the autumn in the north, in the northern valleys, or around Kfar Qasem, not, not far from Tel Aviv, as I say, or in spring, uh, actually everywhere, everywhere in Israel in, uh, during spring. Um, but I think many, many, many of you probably hear about the excellent migration in Eilat. Um, this is um, uh, this is something you have to you have to do. Here's a very very sad sad story, and um, this is something I probably uh, will will remember forever because it's um it's kind of story that uh, you know I, I I take with 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 myself I carry as a very very um, um, uh, emotional uh, story. Um, I was the first Israeli uh, bird watcher of the Israeli army. Um, probably there will be a lot of questions at the end. What is uh, uh, Israeli? Uh, what what is um, uh, birder in the um, a bird watcher for the army? So I used to um, to guide uh, soldiers about birds and about bird con conservation. Um, I was the first one after me, there were two others, and unfortunately, there was no one, uh, uh, there was no one after the army uh, decided that it 
this is not this is not something that the army wants to um, to, to keep uh, doing. During this um, army service, um, I, I live in Jerusalem, and um, I was working for an organization uh, which is today BirdLife Israel. Uh, back in the eighties, it was Israel. Uh, Rap uh, uh, Israel Raptor Information Center, led by Professor Yossi Leshem. Probably many of you know uh, Yossi. And uh, we have a Jeep. And I use some time uh, in Shabbat, take this uh, Jeep and go uh, building in many um, nice uh, places to go. I used to go to Western Negev, to the Negev, to the Judea Desert. Jerusalem is about the center of Israel few, not more than two hours, and uh, we are in, in the beautiful building area of uh, One Shabbat, uh, I think it was uh, February uh, 87. Um, I took the Jeep and I uh, took some of my friends, um, Adi Gantz, um, Yoav per uh, Gidon Perelman, I think Yoav was there as well. Uh, Noam Weiss, uh, and I think Yuval Dax was there as well. And uh, we were driving east to uh, the Judea Desert. We started in a, a nice place, one of the one of the uh, Acacia area uh, near near the Dead Sea uh, coast, and we we watch uh, typhus warbler that used to winter in Israel. And then we start walking into the uh, into the, the, the big canyon of the Tselim. Tselim is one of the big canyons of Judea Desert. And suddenly we see this beautiful, amazing um, Lamegayer uh, or um, uh, bearded vulture, Peres, uh, in Hebrew. Um, it was the last pair that breed in Israel. They used to breed in this amazing canyon that again they have um, draw so so beautifully. Um, it was the last time that I saw the breeding um, bearded vulture of Israel. I never uh, uh, I never saw it again. Unfortunately, it doesn't breed in Israel anymore. Uh, this was the last one. Um, there were, probably there were never many breeding pairs of, of uh, bearded vultures in Israel. There were a few, but um, this is this is a, a memory that I will care for. I will I will take for, with me forever. Just to see these amazing vultures, with this amazing uh, image. This this beautifully uh, reddish uh, under, under uh, belly um, um, uh, plumage. Um, this um, really one of, the, one, one of the most beautiful raptors in, in the world. I, I, I think I saw many raptors and I think this is probably one of the most impressive. And unfortunately, unfortunately um, um, bird watchers today um, uh, for them, a bearded vulture is not something that they can see. We do have some time uh, in the past more today, hardly any um, uh, bearded vultures uh, migrants through Israel or stay for winter. Again, it's happened years ago. Um, I think that the last time uh, was probably maybe 10 years ago. But again, the breeding population of breeded vulture um, extinct from Israel um, 25 years ago, uh, so 23 years ago. Uh, so it's a very, very uh, so it's a sad story for us. And again, uh, experience that I could see and and uh, take with me. And uh, and young builders will not will not have this uh, this this experience, unfortunately. 
This is the story of another vulture, uh, the most common vulture in Israel, which is not common anymore, uh, the griffin vulture, Nesher, um, in Hebrew. And this is the story of Gamla. Gamla is a beautiful canyon up in the Golan Heights. I used to go to Gamla, it, it was about two hours, uh, driving from my kibbutz. I used to take a bus um, every winter, every, every early spring. I used to go to, to Gamla sometime in bus. It, was, it took me like four hours to travel there. But I used to do it and then walk into the reserve, another probably half an hour walk. Because when you get to Gamla, um, you live in a dream. Um, tens, sometime, I don't know, 50, 70, 80 griffin vultures fly overhead, fly into your head, into your face, very low, um, above, above you when you sit, when I sit on the, on, on the canyon, um, powerful. So, this used to be the story of Gamla. Not anymore. I was in Gamla um, two months, three months ago, maybe more, four months ago, uh, because the Channel 11 in Israel made a story about this blog. And they took me to Gamla and we were there uh, in the middle of the summer. You time that in the past, I could see 30, 40 uh, vultures, and we were very lucky. We saw one. Gamla um, vulture uh, colony does not exist anymore. Um, this is mainly due to poisoning of, um, of uh, vultures in the northern part of Israel. Uh, vultures in Israel, uh, unfortunately, reducing. We have population in the south. We have new population, handmade population, if I can call it, due to very, um, um, very, to an excellent uh, project of uh, the Nature and Park Reserve Authority, um, together with cooperation with us, this, the Society for Protection of Nature in Israel and the Electric Company of Israel, um, we manage, they manage to introduce uh, vultures into the, into the nature. And we have now a new colony of vulture in the Carmel. They disappeared from the Carmel um, 70 years ago. So this new population is very, is, is a great story, but, Gamla with no vulture, it's, it is not the same Gamla. I always remember two or three years after I started my work for, um, for SPNI, um, I, um, I took a group of bird life, um, bird life um, um, managers, bird life organization directors from, from the world. And there was a guy from, from Spain, from SEO. SEO is the, the bird life of, of Spain. Now, Spain has so many, so many vultures, thousands. And many big colonies of, of, of vultures. But when we walk on the canyon, uh, on top of the canyon, he told me, listen, I saw so many vultures in my place. I saw so many colonies of, of vultures. Something like that I never saw in my life. The vultures are so close. They fly so close to your face when you walk up, up here on the, on, on the, this is an experience I will carry forever. So yes, it was a great experience for us. Unfortunately, uh, if I take my kids there today, they will not be able to see it. And that's a very sad story. During this uh, army service in Jerusalem, I, 
find myself fail, fail in love in this beautiful bird, lesser kestrel, a buzz adom in Hebrew. Um, this beautiful artwork of the Ev is exactly what I used to see when I was uh, there in Jerusalem. Uh, lesser kestrel again is, is, uh, is not a, a local bird in, in Israel. They, they breed, but they are not here in the, in the winter. They actually uh, stay with us only for a very short uh, time. They arrive, the first arrive about mid February and uh, the last to leave, leave about uh, mid June, maybe early July. So they stay here for a very short time. They, they, uh, they nest, they, they breed, they grow their chicks and uh, they all migrate to Africa. This beautiful artwork showing the, the lesser kestrel of Jerusalem. Now, if any of you is planning a trip to Jerusalem to see the lesser kestrel, don't do it because they are not there anymore. Um, unfortunately, this beautiful colony of about 120, 115 uh, pairs of lesser kestrels that used to breed in these beautiful old uh, houses uh, of, um, uh, this is, this is the, the neighborhood of Musrara, Morasha, uh, but there were also other, other similar a neighborhood like this one that Lesser Castle used, used to breed there, they are not there anymore. There are may, maybe, maybe uh, two or three pairs breed in Jerusalem. Uh, like I said, when I, when I was there uh, in, the early, in the late 80s, there were more than one, uh, 100 pairs. Now, Lesser Castle is not, fortunately, is not anymore um, uh, um, endangered species in Israel. They are now um, okay uh, in, in some other places, but in Jerusalem, they are not exist anymore. Why? Because they breed in the middle of Jerusalem, but lesser kestrel in order to, to, um, uh, to forage, they need, to, they need the open spaces. They need grassland where they find their, um, uh, their, um, uh, their crickets and, and, and um, um, uh, other, um, other small um, um, uh, insects that they, they, they need to, uh, for, their, for, their, for their chicks. And they used to find them in the past very close to, to the neighborhood. Um, about one kilometer. But the, Jerusalem is growing fast, rapidly. Uh, Jerusalem is now a big city. And there are no open land, there are no grassland. So um, a, a research made by, uh, by uh, uh, colleagues of us, uh, if at Leven, shows that this lesser kestrel from Jerusalem, in order to bring food for their, for their chicks, need to travel 16 kilometer just for one piece of, of, a, of a cricket. Um, so in order to grow three or four, three or four uh, chicks, uh, this is of course not enough. So unfortunately this, um, this colony is not exist anymore because the lesser castle of Jerusalem doesn't have a place to forage anymore. Um, so this amazing colony in the middle of this uh, iconic uh, city of Jerusalem is not exist. And again, this is something that I, I, ca I can dig from my notebook. But if I take a group of kids today to Jerusalem, I will not be able to show it to them. And this is the same story yeah, of the... Yeah, yes. if I could just give you about a five minute warning so we have time for some questions and okay. to talk about the photos that you can, that okay. you can be bought. So Thanks. this is, this is a, the same story as the bearded vulture. It's, it's the, uh, the leopard face vulture, Osnia, 
They used to breed in the southern, uh, southern and, and northern Arava and also other places in the Negev. I was lucky to see the last pair, uh, southern Arava, not far, from, not far from Eilat. It was a mass stop for us, for bird watchers. When we go to Eilat to stop near the, near the road, put the telescope on this huge, uh, huge um, uh, uh, vulture, um, unfortunately, they don't breed in Israel anymore. And very, it, it, again, sad story, young bird watchers are not able to see um, a leopard face vulture uh, breed in Israel. And, uh, so I back to where I started. Um, and, uh, and this is, this is, this is what I, what I missed when I, um, when I watch the, just a minute. Oops. So I want to, oops. This is the song of Chavgolan Zmiri in, in, in Hebrew. Um, they don't breed in Israel anymore. So young bird watchers are not able to, to, to hear them. Um, I used to have tens of breeding pairs not far from my home, not anymore. And this is the bird that uh, bring to my, um, to, to my to my mind this this project that I I, I dig stories for my for my old uh, uh, notebook. Um, I, I I want to say that they are also uh, optimistic. Oh, uh, not not everything is pessimist. These are two birds that um, are now uh, are used to be very rare in Israel and not not anymore. Um, the cormoran, the pygmy cormoran, when I started bird watching, was a very rare winter bird in Israel. Um, and when I read about this bird, I, I read that in the past it's used to breed in Israel, in the Hula Valley. Well, today there are hundreds, maybe thousands of breeding pairs of big pygmy cormoran in Israel. They return to breed in Israel uh, near fish ponds in wetlands, uh, it's again a very common bird in Israel. And the white-headed uh, white duck, um, I used to have in, in, my, in my parent house, I, I have an old book uh, written by Uzi Paz, one of the most uh, uh, famous naturalists in, in Israel. And there was a, a little uh, black and white picture of white-headed duck taking in the hula, I always look at this picture and say, when I will able to see this, this bird. And then suddenly at the end of the eighties, um, near my house, new big reservoir. And suddenly one winter, oops, not one, not two, hundreds of white-headed duck. White-headed duck is, um, is, um, is an endangered, um, a, a duck um, globally endangered. Uh, today, in the last 20 years, about 2,000 white-headed duck winter every year in Israel. So not every everything is 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 bad. Uh, we have some some uh, good stories to to say, but unfortunately, most of the stories are not as good as this one. So I have still many stories uh, to, to say. You can, uh, you are welcome to go and, and uh, to come and uh, to, to read my blog, uh, old notebooks don't lie. This is the notebooks, as you can see, I still have many, uh, many things uh, in there. I have many friends to, uh, to thanks. I, I, I mentioned in the beginning, Arad Ben David, Zeev Labinger for the great art. 
מידד גורן for translating, יונתן מירב helping me with, with the social media, מרק uh, פירסון, uh, good friends that um, uh, helped me with this, uh, with this uh, project. And uh, last but not least, I want to tell you that um, uh, Ze'ev uh, is not only a great uh, artist, he's also a great, great person. And he, uh, I, I, I call him and ask him, Ze'ev, will you be so kind and let, ca can you donate this beautiful artwork so we can uh, sell the originals and sell also um, uh, uh, prints, uh, sign prints, or um, um, for, of, of course, for, for uh, as a donation for, for, uh, for conservation, for bird conservation. The F says, of course, yes. So you can go to this um, uh, website uh, and look into this, uh, excellent artwork and if you want any of this um, we will be of course very happy um, to, uh, to um, uh, for you to, to donate and buy this beautiful artwork. Thank you. Great. Wow. Thank you, Dan, very much. And I'm glad you landed on the note of the beautiful artwork and a little bit of optimism because frankly you were bumming us out there for a lot of this. Uh, very, it's very sad, very nostalgic, a lot of this uh, a lot of your memories. So I know you're not that way. And I, I see your optimism every day at work and there's some amazing stuff going on and amazing protection going on, both in fighting the sixth mass extinction event here in Israel and in, and in, and in mitigating climate change in order to do that. So thank you very much. We have a lot of questions in very few minutes. I wanna respect people's time. So quickly, Dan, uh, are any bird species increasing in the last uh, 10, 20 years? Well, I just mentioned, I just mentioned uh, two, but yes, um, um, there are species uh, increasing, um, not always good stories, um, species that, uh, are, you know, are, are very, uh, are very good with, with people and agriculture and, and uh, um, so yes, there are, there are increasing, there are species that increase, some a very good story, uh, not not uh, not for all no, of them. No time for a story. Just give me the species that are increasing. Um, well, for the example, um, 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 collar dove. Um, I mentioned pygmy cormoran. Um, oh. um, things like that. Okay, great. Uh, this this is, could be a whole webinar, but just very briefly, the main causes in Israel of species decline? Well, of course, the main one is a loss of habitat. Mm -hmm. um, Israel is very small, uh, big population on a small, uh, on a small um, uh, uh, land. So, uh, uh, so this, is, this is the main reason. The, the, the second reason uh, is, um, I, I mentioned poisoning, um, hunting, but not, not too much, but yes, hunting, as well, um, um, things like electrifies, elect, uh, uh, electrifying, I mean, birds that uh, uh, electrifies or um, uh, go into or um, collude with, uh, with um, um, uh, electric um, uh, uh, lines. Um, so th th these, these, are, um, these are the main things. Okay. Um... Tell us, um, do you mention, why are birds of prey doing better than other birds? Good question, I don't know. Okay. We, we right. don't have a good reason why, no. Okay, um, so here's a big question. Well, here's a quick question. Will you and Zev be doing a book together? <laughs> I don't know, I call him after, I call him later and ask him. Maybe, we'll talk to a, maybe, we'll talk to maybe, a he can, maybe he can say something on the chat. <laughs> okay, we'll talk to a publisher about that. Um, and here's a, here's a big one, a good one, but try to be very brief. Uh, and I know this is much more relevant for military aviation than, uh, than civil, but how are, how are plane flights regulated over Israel during the peak of migration season? How, uh, how are the plane? plane, how is air traffic regulated yeah. during migration season? Okay, so the, the, um, 
so th there's a not there's a lot of knowledge today about uh, bird migration uh, in either um, uh, army planes and civilians are now um, aware of the the pattern of migration where and when birds are migrants. Uh, there are special units in the um, in the uh, Israel um, uh, uh, flight authority, but also in the army that take care on that. And um, I think we are quite good. Okay, that's good. Um, I feel we had one more question that I didn't get to write down here. Um, and I'm not finding it right now. I can't get back to my Zoom. Um, I think we're about good. Dan, do you want to, um, is there anything else you want to say uh, as we're uh, finishing up here? I certainly want to thank you and uh, thank Avi in, uh, in Toronto and Lawrence in Modine. And yes, I, I have one, one more thing to say. Okay. Uh, I'm not the only one um, having these stories. Uh, I'm sure that there are many bird watchers in the, in the crowd and they have their stories, either from Israel, but, not, but also from, from other places. Mm -hmm. I'm happy if anyone wants to send me a story from his notebook from his old notebook. Uh, if you go to the, to the uh, blog, you can see that there were two stories that people already uh, published and, uh, um, and there are a few planning. Um, I'm, I'm happy to host uh, stories of others, either from Israel and not only from Israel, because this is a story of all, for all of us. I mean, this is a story that uh, everybody is carrying. We, we see less and less birds uh, and um, uh, we need to, to tell this, this story in order to try and, 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 and show people uh, that we, we don't want to live in a world that have no bird. We want, uh, we want to hear um, uh, warblers, we want to hear turtle dove, and we want to live in a nice world with, with many birds around us. So these stories are important to show and to explain uh, the situation. And so if you have stories, send it, send it to, to us and I, I'll help people to publish them. That's great. In your book? In my book with uh, Zaev, yes. First in yeah. my blog, after that we'll see. We'll give, we'll give you citations, everybody. Send in your stories. Um, quick question. Um, I think it was about the lesser crest, crest, kestrels. Can they forage in Gazelle Valley? I assume yes, um, but probably it's too late. Well, you know, um, a good question. Maybe, maybe one day um, a Gazelle Valley will become forage area for lesser castrels and we have new, new colonies. You know what? Why not? Alibi. Alibi. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dan. This is great. I hope everybody um, can. Uh, get online and support these efforts. Uh, we're, we've had a tough year in SPI in general and in our birding conservation. Um, we, uh, we'd be very appreciative of any donations. And of course, uh, these prints are for sale and they, those are donations as well, uh, tax deductible donations uh, to get a, one of Zev's uh, original pieces of artwork or a print of it. Uh, so that, uh, that link was also on the email that you all got a couple hours ago about this webinar. So you can link to it from there as well. Uh, it's on our website as well, natureisrael.org. Dan alone, head of BirdLife Israel, our top birder, a guy with great memories and great stories. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Avi, Lawrence, uh, everybody, our uh, supporters all over the world. Uh, Avi's just posted it again here on the chat so uh, people can have it as well. But again, it's in the email, everybody. I think everybody's on the webinar uh, and maybe some on Facebook got the email we sent today. If not, uh, contact us and give us your email. Uh, thank you very much. Really appreciate everybody being here and uh, have a good night from Tel Aviv and Israel. Thank yeah. you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Avi.